another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We keep changing, like, the set on you guys. It's like little things at a time. We have two mics. Uh, hey. Yeah, thanks for joining us, tuning in, watching or listening, <laughs> doing it. However you're doing it, where you're doing it. Beautiful. You really gotta punctuate that sound. Guys, as always, this uh, this podcast is sponsored by... <laughs> Brought to you by Consonants. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Cardsphere.com. Uh, best place, in my opinion, to buy and sell tr- uh, cards. I was going to say trade. That doesn't really work. <laughs> buy and sell right. cards online. Yeah. Uh, super easy. You get to name your own price. It's a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Uh, the guys over there are really helping us out, and they're awesome. So go they check are. it out. Check it out. Uh, link is in the description. Um, so, the plan today, guys... Uh, it feels like it's been a long time, by the way, since we've recorded. Uh, it's I just it, want to point that Because it has been. You've been where, Kev? I was Kev? in uh, Germany. Uh, Deutschland, Boston. I think, is what they... Yeah. I think right? So. Yeah, sure. You would know. I was in Freising. If you know where Munich is, it's like 30 minutes to the left. I was trying to think of a fry <laughs> joke to make. <laughs> Were you? Um, I got nothing. Schnitzel's fried, right? Yeah, it's pounded pork that's fried. Not pork. Oh, don't fight me. Uh, I don't know what schnitzel is. Never mind. It can be pork. Can it's it? either pork or lamb. It's just really flattened meat that's fried, right? Yeah, Lightly that's fried. basically it. It's Ooh. pretty good. Um, I watched Chopped. Anyway, yes, I was there for the past week, and so we pre-recorded the last episode, so it's actually been like a week and a half, two weeks, yeah. something like that, it's since we've actually recorded. I got so haircut. I didn't. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> that's what's been on my plate. Uh, yeah, so the schedule for today, guys. We have our random card of the day, of course. We're going to be talking about Pro Tour Dominaria. Uh, super interesting Pro Tour. And then we have... I'll fight you. <laughs> we have our question of the week. And then, of <clears throat> course, our uh, Cracker Packs at the very end. So Naturally. Let's kick it off. Random card of the day. Fresh your magic brains. We Get got prepared this. to talk about cards. This Three, is two, the warm one. up. Blessing, oh. literally. Enchant creature for two white. You can pay one white, and target creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. You know what's funny is what? I was looking through a box of bulk that I have, <laughs> and I found, like, three of these. Did you really? Yeah. Does I it... like that this is an alpha card. That's cool. What I think is interesting is before Magic kind of figured out what <laughs> what's specific to what colors, this is fire breathing for white. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting, I think. It is. And that's yeah. like the only redeemable thing about the card. Not that yeah. it is redeemable in any way. Um, it's not so much of a blessing that we actually have this card, let's be honest. Right. It's like, uh, here's the thing. If I was like drafting, which, I don't was that even a thing in Alpha? In Alpha? I honestly don't know. I'm not um, sure. It did get reprinted in Magic 2014 for some reason. Um Mm. Anyway, um, okay, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, dude. So like, in draft, what are you doing? Sorry, <laughs> he's, um, he's just clicking around at things. I don't know how to work Max. <laughs> Apples are fruits, not computers. <laughs> I feel like this is like, like you would play it if you had to in a white deck. Nah, but yeah. like only mm. if you had to. You know what I mean? Well, okay, so... In draft only, by the, just saying. Only in Magic 14, because it was printed yeah. in Uncommon. Yeah. So, Which is kind of weird, but I think... It is weird. So, I don't know, Exalted was a thing back then? So maybe... Yeah. Sla- or was that 2013? I don't remember, honestly. Slap, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know was Glade Cover Scout in... 2014? It was in a bunch of core sets. I mean, they would have That would be in, interesting. They would have been in to Standard it. together. <clears throat> like that would have been cool to have it on a hexproof one one, you know what I mean? Because then you could just buff it up. Nobody can really do anything about yeah. it. But then the issue becomes mm. mana curve because you need green on turn one and then two white on turn two to actually play. So it's like not land. that great. You need sun petal grove. Which I hate that this is in. too white. That's like yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it was a white and a and just generic, it would have been a little bit easier to cast, and it still would have been good. But I would have played it more often. I bet. Oh, you never would have played it. No, don't never don't lie to the it. people. I'm, I'm trying to make this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Here's the thing. You don't play this. Let's just nah, be honest. Really don't. Here's the thing. You don't make every card work, right? There's a no. situation out there. I'm still trying to figure out what, what's best for this. Uh, <laughs> there's a situation probably where every card has its like niche. Sure. It's home. And limited is kind of the cop out, right? Yeah. Like 
there's always going to be a situation like you could where you, you could really play this it. card limited. Well, yeah, only because you don't have other cards to play. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that's what blessing suffers from. Yeah, it does. You're right. Uh, would I put it in a uh, sealed deck? Maybe. Maybe. Really? Maybe if like if it would go on a fatty. Blue white flyers. Yeah, I'd put this on in blue white flyers. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just not good. This would make but a Welkin just... turn really scary. <laughs> <laughs> the takeaway is this card sucks. And it falls into that category where it's like there are going to be niches where it can be okay, but like nine times out of ten, it's just not good enough. Yeah, you d- you have to do a lot to make this work. <laughs> like, what's it going to do? Uh, it buffs a thing, but the turn after it comes in, it's effective. So like, yeah. if, they're, if Blessing is really a problem, it'll just remove your creature. Well, and that's that know. is a good point. There's two things that I don't like about enchanting creatures specifically. They're investments, so it's easier to be two for one. Mm-hmm. If they just remove the creature, you lost yeah. two cards. It's also dependent on you already having a creature out. And so right. not I mean not all the time. Hopefully you'll have creatures out most of mm-hmm. the time, but there will be occasions where this is just a dead card in hand. I would have much rather preferred and probably played more in an artifact costs one equip one but has blessings two white fire breathing cost i would see what you're saying one plus one. but it's you an equipment I mean? yes so it sticks around if the creature dies yes yeah that would have been much better um, i think that card would be playable yes it wouldn't have been great but it would have been no. playable. more than blessing yeah. not good yes but playable no i'm with that maybe i don't know tell me i'm wrong do it i dare you no <laughs> no you can that's just like your opinion, man. Yeah. Kind of mine, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly. Right. Uh, let's jump in, though, to Pro Tour Dominaria. This was held cool. in Richmond on uh, the 6th of this, the very beginning of this month. This is the first time we're really seeing was standard with Dominaria. Third. Was it the 3rd? Was it the 6th? I mean, MTG Top 8 says the 6th. Well, then it was probably the 6th. Okay. No, it doesn't actually. It says the first. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know how to read dates. I thought it was the first to the third. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> we'll gloss over that. Uh, yes, this is the first time we're really seeing standard. Excuse me, with Dominaria cards. Right. In in person, I guess we did get online yeah, yeah. for a little bit. Um, so we kind of knew. Yeah. So, do you want to give the highlights? <laughs> Red. <laughs> Done. All right. No. Good um, episode, guys. So this is just going to turn into anytime I get to write an episode is uh, Will tries to convince Kevin to play standard. Um, you didn't help me out a lot, Dominaria, yet. Uh, yet. Yeah. So, yeah, we see, and to Kevin's point, and a lot of other people point out that in the beginnings of a new set dropping, mm-hmm. uh, when it's still fresh, the dew hasn't dissolved from the grass. It's the early morn of a new start. (laughs) Uh, Aggro kind of takes the forefront. Yeah. And in a big way, this time, it did. Um, Which is fine. It's a good way to play Magic. It's fair. It's nothing tricksy. Right, Kev? Yeah, fun. so much. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. We'll talk about the top eight, because those are the eight most important decks. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the most interesting, but consistent, (laughs) powerful, simple, whatever. (laughs) Uh, so, <laughs> four of them, <laughs> Rakdos, Aggro, and they're all going to be pretty much the same, the same lists. Yeah. Um, there I, were some small variants, but I don't think anything was too crazy. No, no. Uh, there was a <clears throat> there was a black red mid range deck <clears throat> that was a lot different, and uh, yeah, Rakdos mid range uh, that also cracked the top eight. Yeah. Um, so you could say five of the eight decks were Rakdos, technically, but yeah. four aggro, one is mid-range. Uh, arguably, it's also pretty aggressive. Uh, <laughs> numbers have changed, and there's a few more answers. You know how mid-range yeah, works. Yeah. Um, then you have Esper Control, the solitary yeah. control list. Yeah. I think not the only control list played in the tournament. We also no, had no. white-blue uh, approach. And if Approach I'm not still holding its own, if I'm not mistaken, whoa, what was it? What was it? Blue black, yeah, blue black control is still oh, cool. running around. Um, you say cool, six wins. So oh, okay. I'm fighting um a cough. Forgive me. You can do it. I believe in you, man. We just smoked cigars. <clears throat> it's gone. The cough <laughs> is gone. <clears throat> um, he had to celebrate. Uh, the safe travels back. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um. 
and the, the top the top deck red deck wins uh i guess red deck wins hey this time and yeah that's the entire uh, top eight is a lot of red uh i'm so tired of seeing red but we get to talk about a few of the cards that stick out in red one of which has <laughs> pretty much remained for most of the season um well really two i should say two uh <clears throat> interestingly enough it's oh no there it is sorry um, the first one I want to mention is Rekindling Phoenix, kind of taking uh, Glorybringer's place a little bit. Glorybringer is sideboarded in this main list. Let's go over the, the list in a moment, but we'll talk about these cards. Uh, <clears throat> Rekindling Phoenix, just a more consistent, <clears throat> aggressive attacker in that it protects itself. Yep. Uh, it's got its little recursion trick. Um, it It's not hindered by the exert mechanic yeah While i you, think that's really important you could say it is a benefit and it is it is massive like yeah definitely it's four a damage. great ability yeah. but it does take a turn off definitely so uh <laughs> it doesn't have haste you can say that but yeah it comes but... into turn earlier so really yeah exactly you know what i mean the damage is there mm -hmm. um but a more consistent attacker it's it's just a beautiful card i think it, it rightfully takes glory bringer spot but glory bringer was played <clears throat> still consistently throughout the tournament and we still see a wrecking, wrecking house yep. uh, for all the reasons we just mentioned. Uh, then the other card, uh, Hezret the uh, Fervent, of course, still, you know. It just gives the inevitability. Face. I mean, we've yeah. talked about it a million times <clears throat> before. Yeah. Um, red deck wins always suffers from kind of just fizzling out. Yeah. Uh, this gives it that end game that it really, really needed to be mm -hmm. able to say, okay, I drew this useless card. I can just toss it. Yeah. Um, and it just gets in the last few points of damage. It's also just a big beater, mm -hmm. right? Like, if it can attack, it's just a big beater. Yeah, it's scary. Um, it's huge. It's awesome. Yeah, a 5-4 indestructible that chucks shock cards. At, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. pretty good. <laughs> Can't say enough good stuff about but it. But the new kid on the block. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the fresh face. This card's insane. Our green friend. <laughs> Swinging his chains, Goblin Chain Whirler made a huge splash. Oh man! In this tournament, played in almost half of all decks in this tournament. Was it almost half? Forty nine percent. Wow. The uh, the card that took the top spot is Duress. Okay. Duress well, fits yeah. in a bunch of stuff. Right yeah, now. of course. So makes sense. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Goblin Chain Whirler in forty nine percent of the decks played at the tournament, just about. Uh, which is, I will say. Uh, you keep doing your thing. I'm looking at something. Yeah, you're fine. It's consistent <laughs> with uh, Glorybringer and Hezzeret, okay. but that is mostly because um, they're also in Rakdos Aggro and stuff like that. So that was actually my question. Yeah. Is it in Rakdos Aggro? Because um, the reason I asked that, the downside to this card is that it's triple red to cast. Mm -hmm. um, and so Rakdos Aggro, just splashing a second color, my worry would be that if I have this in my hand on turn three but mm -hmm. don't have the mana to cast it, um, so I was just curious if it was mm -hmm. in there. It is, and I think it makes sense that it is. Well, but um, there's enough dual lands that... Something really curious about Rakdos Aggro, uh, if you look here, there's not a lot of black cards in yeah. Rakdos Aggro. Yeah. What you get, cut to ribbons, unlicensed disintegration, and scrap heap scrounger, potentially. Yeah. Scrap heap scrounger, of course, in artifacts. You don't need black necessarily to turn it on. There's a lot more black in, not a lot more, but there's more black in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. uh, so Certainly. Doomfall is definitely a good inclusion, Certainly. I would say. Doomfall, Duress. Duress. Another cut to ribbons. Another cut. Uh, Angrath. Yeah. Um, just some more like removal there's spells two, and stuff like that. No, no. that's right. Um, but it it's just answers. That's really why you have mm -hmm. black in the deck is to take care of certain things that right. mono red doesn't really deal with super well. Right. Um so yeah, but back to back to Goblin Chain Whirler for a moment because I'm going to yeah. pose a question yeah, yeah. kind of after we go over uh, the list because I want to talk about Rakdos Aggro, uh, or sorry, no, I want to talk about Esper Control and Red Deck Wins, uh, the lists themselves. Mm. Uh, so Chain Whirler itself, three three for three red. Yep, cool. It's part of that uh, three color cycle. Yeah, the three. I don't know what you call it. Three color CMC. I don't know if there's a name for it, but Steel you, Leaf Champion is one. Yeah, the, all the, the cycle is Banalesh, whatever. Black got a shade. A gin was. Blue. Oh, that's right. The gin's pretty good. Gin's pretty good for limited. For limited. Uh, yeah, it's like that's what made me want to play Modern Warfare <laughs> <laughs> in our sealed. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it comes in. It's got first strike. 
I forgot about that. Yeah. Three through the first strike. When Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So what you're getting <laughs> is essentially electricery for everything yeah. your opponent has. Which and we is... all know how good electricery is. <laughs> um... <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, for this in... for this scenario, it's good. It's not through your body. It's good. Uh, so yeah, uh, my my favorite thing about this is that it hits planeswalkers too. Yeah. What I the interaction I'll point out is your Teferi's. Uh, your Teferi's second ability. It's minus three. Put target non-land permanent into its owner's library. Third from the top. Uh, they play Teferi. They remove your thing. You play Chain Whirler, and Teferi's dead. Yep. Uh, so that's really good balance for red. Yeah. Dealing with Teferi. Uh, if, of course, Teferi was used to answer stuff. <clears throat> um, that's fun. It also just pings blockers off of... Yep. It can kill them sometimes, like we mentioned. It pings them off of uh, uh, ultimates. It's it takes just, care of, like green decks playing land war elves and yeah. stuff like that it takes care of a lot it's of great. decent stuff it hits a bunch of the merfolk like yeah um it's the one i'm thinking of the two one that uh explores merfolk. Yeah, yeah, yeah ranch walker yes is that a I two believe. one i think so i don't know standard cards as well so oh kev more on that later uh <laughs> so yeah goblin chain where they're doing absolute work yeah. so what I think it adds to the red decks is this is what we'll talk about for a moment uh, as we go over the list. Um, uh, on Crop Crasher at three uh, is not like this kind of got put back in red deck wins. This mm-hmm. wasn't a part of for a while. It didn't have a bunch of turn three stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goblin Chain Whirler adds so much value at turn three. <laughs> Essentially, red deck turns one and two got a bunch of great things. Yeah. Right? Bomat Courier, uh, Earth Shaker Kenra, a bunch of stuff that turns on the rest of the deck. And then at four and five, I got a bunch of stuff. And turn three is fine. You can play two other good things, yeah, whatever sure. and stuff. Turn three wasn't super exciting for Red. Now I think it is. Yeah. So really what I'm trying to say is that Red deck, <laughs> every turn now has the potential to play just a bomb. Yeah. The value in a Red deck just feels absurdly disproportionate with the rest of it does you know what I no mean? i definitely agree and what i think is really interesting is moving forward um into rotation time mm-hmm. in a few months when that actually happens we're not really gonna lose that much no like we lose like bomet courier sure. which is big and is big because it refills the hand right and that's a huge huge buff to this deck it does keep it going yep. kari zev T- doesn't need to be in there. It's um, good, not great. Yeah, right? there's some like, other cool two drops you can you can stick in. <laughs> yes. Um, but you do lose Karizev, which I mean, it's another attacker. You, yeah, there's a bunch to say about there's it. There's <clears throat> filler stuff for that, but like, right? That's kind of it, right? Yeah, really. That's <laughs> like, it. Um, <laughs> Aether Spear Harvester isn't in every main board. Yeah. Um, Chandra Torch of Defiance is a great card, but again, again not really in the main yeah. board most of the time. It's yeah. more of a, a cyborg tech kind of yeah. card and we are just talking about red deck wins not yes. your uh black red mid-range which yeah. plays chandra made board yes if i'm not mistaken usually um but yeah they don't lose a lot of stuff they will lose some gas um getting rid of their bomat courier sure um and that is that is massive but they don't slow down necessarily in terms of their like first five turns mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. their aggressiveness uh <laughs> they do lose their longevity maybe but Still, Hazaret with Hazaret, Hazaret, <laughs> uh, and the Chain Whirler now. Like they get, they're still so aggressive. I think yeah. they, they can close out before they really need to deal with. Um, I think so. Like too. a card advantage, and if you see, <clears throat> like the amount that Rakdos Aggro got played, there's, in my opinion, just a smooth transition into adding black mm-hmm. just to help with card advantage to give you answers to kind of ensure that. Like, you can transition later and be fine. You don't need to worry about... And I think what we might see is, like, obviously red deck wins, trying to win very, very early. I think the Rakdos deck is going to take that more mid-range approach where, like you said, we're going to have more black answers for things and less of, like, the Bomat Couriers, the super aggressive cards. Mm -hmm. And so we'll still see a very aggressive line of play, I think, 
Um, but in the first few turns, it might be less of the, like, here, let me ping for one or two, mm -hmm. let me get some early damage in. Instead, it'll be trying to maybe set up for some some uh, removal spells or mm -hmm. something along those lines. Um, and so I, I think it might be a, sm a shift backwards in terms of, like, it might be trying to win a turn later. But it's not going to be a huge sure. shift. It's still going to be a really powerful deck. Yep. Um, I, I, I mean... Red deck seems like it's here to stay for a while. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Unless they ban something, which I don't think they should do yet. Right. So <laughs> we'll put a pin in that. Yeah. Um, I don't think so either, but that's just my opinion, man. Kind of on the radar, maybe, though. Um, Yes, but I'd want to wait until, like, after rotation to seriously yeah. consider it. Because, yeah. I mean, my – the one that jumps out to me is, is Hezzeret. Yeah, if you're gonna ban. Something, oh yeah, yeah. You no, take, definitely. Like, I think Chain Whirler is great, but it's a new card. It's mm -hmm. fine, but I think Hazaret's the card that really puts it over the top. Right, I'm with that. Um, but <laughs> again, I don't think I don't think the answer isn't to ban stuff. And if no. you've if your standard season or sorry, you don't use that. If your if standard is shaped the way that it should be, I don't feel like you need to ban stuff to answer it. No, um, <clears throat> you just need better. Like well, and there are answers, right? Oh, of course, of course, there, there are plenty, answers. <laughs> um, plenty of answers. Excuse me. Your uh, your scary god's bigger. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, am I mistaken? No, it's a five five. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, I thought it was a five five. Uh, so no, the scary god fights it. Yeah. And it's fine. I mean, yeah, they die. What? Look. Anyway. <laughs> There are answers, but the the problem becomes right, right. Frasca's contempt that too. Uh, <laughs> the problem is just for, one for control decks getting there and answering all these things. I think yeah. Bowman Courier out probably helps a ton with that. Yeah. As I'm saying this, I'm starting to think more like what goes into black red to give it the uh the mid-range kind of punch that it needs you know because a lot of a lot of what uh the rectus mid-range benefits from mm -hmm. it's like the PNLRs <clears throat> giving it some longevity sure scrap heap scroungers uh recursion stuff like that a lot of the good answers in black except for Vraska's contempt are from kaladesh and they will yeah. rotate out yeah yeah um um so i don't know like i think I think we will see. There's some uh, new removal in Dominaria that I think is potentially worth splashing for. Uh, but Vraska's Contempt is obviously kind of the best spell, the removal spell, I would say, in standard right now. Um, I think to be able to run potentially a playset, though I don't know exactly how many you would run, um, in a deck, just have the, the answers to basically anything, right. uh, is really worthwhile. And I think that replaces at least one of the play sets of either Bowmat Courier or uh, what was the other card that Red Deck went? Uh, Karizev. Right. Um, and there's not even generally a full play set of Karizev because it's a legendary creature. You're right. really looking you at like two. six slots. Yeah. And so like Vraska's Contempt can take you, up to you're four. You're talking of just them. for like Red Deck wins? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. Just like adapting the Red Deck wins to having a like few the answers with Black. Play two cut to ribbons. Play four Vraska's contempt or something along those lines. So giving you know I mean? giving Rakdos aggro uh, Vraska's contempt over yeah. Bomekker. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yes, you're not going to get the card draw off of it, but you're going to be able to have answers, and so mm -hmm. you're going to be able to deal with the mm -hmm. opponent mm -hmm. so much easier. Um, so I th again, I think it slows the deck down a bit, definitely. Yeah. But I think the the longevity of it becomes a little bit better i think you become more of a mid-range deck but it's still super aggressive Definitely. with some of the like three drops uh and then into four and five so yeah, yeah I, sure. I think that's kind of the way i would uh, try that first and then maybe adapt as i go but that would be where i would start okay you know what i mean yeah i'm with you there um I don't think I don't think you need to change too much about Red Deck. No, Lindsay, I think it's right. plenty good enough. I do think we might see some random side creatures that we're not expecting yet uh, tested out just to see if they can fill those slots. Well, well yeah, we'll and they always get played on MTGO first. Yeah, of course. We'll That's see them fine. there first. Um, um, but yeah, Red Deck wins has just been at the top of the game for so long now. Um, yeah, but not necessarily. It didn't necessarily take the top spot over other decks. Um, you had blue black control. Yeah, that's really true. fighting well against it. 
Not so much this time. No, um, not at all this time. Again, the value across the curve is a little bit too good. I think. Yeah. Anyway. No, I agree. I agree. Um, but I want to talk about the Esper Control deck because yeah. I promised I would. <laughs> um, so six creatures, three Scarab Gods, and three Torrential Torrential Gear Hulks. Uh, Great again, creature package. Fat Caster, just yeah, super fun. Yeah, yeah. God, I love this card so much. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> and then 25 instants and sorceries. You got cast down. <laughs> this is the card that is kind of... I question necessarily like how many copies of this to run. Yeah, Because yeah. uh, it's destroy target non-legendary creature, um, which is... I mean, it still hits a ton of things. Well, with all the aggro decks running around right now, yeah. it yeah, makes yeah, yeah. sense to run it, I yeah, would say. And it's only for two. Yeah. I would err on the side of like <clears throat> two main board and the two other in the sideboard, just depending. Sure. Because, um, I mean, in the mirror match, I'm only hitting three. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Because I can't hit Scare God at all. So, I don't know. I just... It's just my opinion. Uh, <laughs> to ponder. Uh, two sensors in the main board. One commit to memory. Catch all. Yeah. Just a, a nice one. Uh, four disallow. This was interesting. Four disallow over, like, sensor or something. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a hard counter, right? Right. Hard counter is a lot of... Um, uh, Scarab God triggers is like yeah. the first thing that comes to mind to yep. me um, because the Scarab God does work. That's kind of, I think, for the for five mana, I think mm-hmm. the Scarab God is probably your best investment. Yeah. Uh, right now, it it is just a monster. It's so good. It takes yeah. over games by itself. Absolutely. It becomes the first person to resolve a Scarab God, if that's like the bomb for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if that's the top of the curve, really, uh, the game then becomes dealing with that. Yeah. That alone. Yeah. Um, no deck gets to goldfish against the Scarab God, really. No. Uh, which is great uh, for a lot of reasons. So you can get back any any fun creatures they have. So if mm-hmm. you're playing against a mono green, uh, I think the the name was Steel Leaf Stompy. Yeah. Was the, the going <laughs> title. Uh, if you've answered a Steel Leaf Champion, you, boom. Yep. Th- congrats. You found <laughs> one. Um, if it's Red Deck Wins and, heck, I don't know, do, do you want a Goblin Chain Whirler for some reason? <laughs> congrats. You got one. Yeah. Uh, you just took care of their two Bomag Couriers, et cetera, et cetera. It's just so powerful. Yeah. It's, it gains value so quickly that yeah. it has to be answered. And yeah. And there's just no other way around it. Yeah. Um, uh, the champ- Champion of Wits is another good... Uh, oh. Um, champion such a good card combo combo interaction interaction is what i wanted to say yeah it's mini but, combo kind of thing uh yeah scarab god just can take games away by itself if yeah. unanswered so it, i think it's the best of five right now. um sorry so commit to memory disallow to fight that stuff for mm-hmm. fatal push because it's still the most efficient removal right now where did it go glimmer of genius it's just hard draw yeah. yeah it's a great card nothing nothing wrong to say about that uh syncopate <laughs> I love Syncopate. Fun. I'm glad right. we have Syncopate back. Yeah, I like it a lot. Great card. Um, it scales well. Right? Yeah. That's what you love. That's what you love. Um, Vraska's Contempt, four of, again, probably the most profitable answer, would you say? Movie I style? would say so. It's also right. really flexible um, because it does hit creatures or planeswalkers. Mm-hmm. It gains you a little bit of life, which is only really relevant against aggro decks, mm-hmm. but you are against a lot of aggro decks right now, so yeah. it does make sense. Um yeah, it's only two life, but when you're getting hit with chain whirlers right and left, that two life can matter. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. In the long um, run, a little bit. A little bit can help. It's definitely nice to kind of mitigate it that. It also <laughs> uh, teams well with the blood fast because it mitigates the life that you lose from the blood fast. True. <laughs> definitely <laughs> true. Um, this is a scary card to me. Yeah. So I wouldn't have run this. So here's here's what's great about it. So, Bloodfast. <laughs> sacrifice, uh, just because it's here, sacrifice yeah. Torrential Gear Hulk to the Bloodfast. Yeah. Bring back Torrential Gear Hulk with the Scarab God. Then you can sack it again yeah. if you want the next turn with the Bloodfast. You get to or you life. can steal their creature and do the Right, or you can steal their creature and do But that. either way, yeah. You're so, like, that right. interaction there is you bring stuff back with the Scarab it God. Seems so risky. Get your e- Oh, definitely. Like, That's why it's a one-off. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, definitely. But Yeah, I mean, card draw on uh, the enchantment in and yeah. of itself is nice. Yeah. But then you have that payoff if you get there. Yes. Right. So, my, my thinking is you don't 
like aim for that unless you've got a scarab god and a yeah. solid board. Yeah, I think right. you're right. And I do think because of the aggro decks, you're probably going to get there more times than not. Unfortunately. Um, so it may just happen anyway. And in that case, then you can maybe use that to your advantage. Like it, it turns having a low life total into a potential advantage. It gives you an out sort of. Um, yeah. But like it, I don't know. It's, that's risky to me. <laughs> I don't know that I would have played it. I think it's risky if if you bank on <laughs> I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. What I like is it's kind of a safety net to where yeah. you know if red deck is beating you out, but if if you have the board enough to make it work, yeah. There you go. That just is. And a I lot mean, of in an instant, heck, you could even sacrifice the scarab god, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because I mean, it goes to the hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The next end step, but mm-hmm. I mean again you make that work that's like a plus you can set up a block and then sack the creature in response like you can do a lot of different little interaction stuff there's Um, tricky things to do yeah yeah yeah. it's it's a nice like just in case and that's why it's a one yeah yeah i don't normally like one ofs but i think there kind of makes sense that's fair um and then to round out the main board two to fairy uh kind of will go in every control deck i think probably he hit modern did you did you know? I didn't know. There was a deck, and I don't remember the deck list, but he hit a modern deck list, which I think is a little sketch, just because he's five mana. Well, here's but what his I, abilities are perfect. What I love about so good. Teferi is he's so perfectly balanced. Yes. So he's a card that you can't play until turn five, but when you do, he only costs three, essentially. Yeah. Like, unless you're yeah, balancing yeah. something. But, like, that feels really good to me. Yeah. They used to print cards that say you can't play this card before turn three or something like that. I think it's an angel I'm thinking of. Yeah, there was... Something uh, like that. It's a mono white angel. I know yeah. exactly... I don't know the name of it, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. So this feels like a soft way to do that with this plus one. Yeah. Um, But it's also just good after you cast it too, right? Yeah. Draw a card and then untap stuff. It will always, at minimum, replace itself or remove a really powerful threat or yeah. a potentially powerful threat. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It it leaves you ready to deal with the top of a red deck curve. Yeah. Uh, in standard and uh, God, I won't even touch modern with this right now. I, yeah, yeah, that's a whole other thing. I'm not, in, <laughs> I'm not in the mind state for that. I'm not there for that. Uh, what, the, the sideboard: <laughs> one cast down, three duress, an essence scatter, single copy. I would uh, potentially bleed more. Um. I would too. I think as a one of, I wonder what it's in there just to. I mean, just in case. to against a solid glory bringer or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it's just, there's so mm-hmm. many things that Essence Scatter hits yep. in these aggro decks. So. Yeah. Uh, forsake the Worldly for your nasty enchantments yeah. that run around. Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Ooh. Um, interesting card. I like this card. I don't know about in control. It's a little interesting, but. Yeah, I'm not sure why that would be necessarily in there uh four negate and That's one settle the wreckage um settle the wreckage is why do people sneaky. not play more settle the wreckage i don't know it, that's right? l- i'm posing that question to you guys why do people not play more settle the wreckage because clearly red deck wins <laughs> it's all around here why don't we why don't we do something about that you know yeah i don't know settle the wreckage <laughs> and is great fumigate where's fumigate um, Where's the board wipe? Yeah, that's still in, right? Fumigate? That was in Kaladesh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why do we not have Fumigate? I don't know. How did this deck make it into the top eight? <laughs> no, Without Fumigate? <laughs> Without Fumigate. Fumigate is great. I don't know. These are the questions that need answering, and we're not going to answer them. <laughs> Honestly, though, Settle the Wreckage is kind of... It's insanely good, I yeah. think. Um, but overall, to say... Uh, the best performing decks, quote unquote, of the tournament, <laughs> Rakdos Aggro, of course, um, yeah. piloted by Matt Sivera, got 27 points overall. Ooh. Didn't win. No. But still still great. So that's kind of the season we're in. The yep. season of red. Did I talk about yeah. all the things I wanted to with that? I think so. I think you had um, everything I would have oh, talked about. Oh, right. My, my question. Um, oh, yeah. Of banning. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see a banning, so no, I don't think we're I getting don't there. Think we need I think it's way too early to start that, but people speculate this is the internet. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, you're on R and D. No, you're not. You're on whoever <laughs> makes those decisions. Kevin, I'm Mark Rosewater. I'm telling you to ban something. What is yeah. it? Uh, Hazaret. It would have to be Hazaret. Okay. Um, just because it gives okay. the inevitability 
to the red deck like chain whirler is a great card mm. when it comes into play it does a lot of stuff and mm. it is a 3-3 with first strike which is admirable but you can outpower it sure and a red deck wins the thing that is supposed to be able to beat the red deck is either outpowering it or outpacing it and Hazaret's the one card that kind of screws that all up so like i think it has to be if anything Hazaret. but i don't think we're there yet yeah i don't think so either there are still answers for Hazzy. Yes. Hazzy? Hazzy? Well, Hazzy. Hazzy. I'm going to say Hazzy. Furby. Well, Hazzy Wazzy. Because she's really Furby Wurby. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched. We have, my wife and I, a backlog of shows to watch. And one one show we love is Last Man on Earth. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's just a, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's, <laughs> it's not for everybody, but it is golden. And there's some clever wordplay in one episode that just sticks with me. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so Pro Hazaret. Tour Dominaria. Yeah, I would say Hazaret. Okay. Um, but yeah, Pro Tour Dominaria, we're not seeing mm. anything too crazy new, unfortunately. No. Uh, but yeah. hopefully, I mean, this is a, a new standard season. Uh, Dominaria's in, so hopefully things will flesh out a little bit hopefully we'll start to see more mid well they will it's still like early i mean it's the, very early. the first pro tour with uh with the new set kind of like the next one's going to be drastically different yeah you cannot uh, judge based on a singular pro tour no. especially the first pro tour yeah uh, and standard alone work. a bunch yeah, of stuff yeah. will still get played um i saw who was it i mm, maybe it was owen turtenwald i don't remember but someone tweeted a deck list of uh uh blue green constructs i think mm, that's interesting or maybe it was just it might have been just blue constructs but it was i bet it was spicy how did you know i was gonna say spicy you always say spicy i do because <laughs> if a deck is good it's after 97 mm, episodes spicy. you'd think i know Oh, so spicy. Speaking of 97 episodes, and a few more episodes, we'll be at episode 100, which brings us to our question of the week. Uh, we're repeating our question of the week oh, for the next man. couple of weeks because we <clears throat> want to get more and more suggestions of what you guys want right. to see for our 100th episode. Yep. Uh, I will say... Yeah, what are, we not, what are we not doing, Kev? We're not going to do any of the suggestions. So, okay, we've really gotten two. Uh, the first is flip it or rip it. We're not doing that. We're not. Doing I don't that. like ripping magic cards. I don't like doing that. We unless did that it's like once, trickery. Unless, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to do flip it or rip it personally. Yeah. Uh, that's already been a polarizing thing, and we're not about to start that. So, um, <laughs> somebody did say to do it with a beta pack. I I say if you send us the beta pack, not gonna do that. Still, <laughs> I just will keep the beta pack. <laughs> Uh, the other yeah. thing people were saying was to get 100 random packs, because apparently the random pack openings are kind of like the thing we're most known for now. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny. We have a bunch of weird stuff. Um, that's not within our budget, uh, as it turns out. No, we we have uh, uh, climaxed the budget. <laughs> We've climaxed the budget, yeah. So we can't <laughs> do that, unfortunately. Um, we will, we're planning on doing the pie in the face. Oh, for sure. That's going to happen. Maybe a hundred pies. <laughs> <laughs> just little mini pies. Just the <laughs> pew. <laughs> Who knows, um, man. But yeah, give us some suggestions, guys. Leave them in the comment section below. Of course, we'll post it everywhere else as well. Yep. Uh, but we want to know what you guys want to see to celebrate. And if you want to... we I thought about doing this. If you want to do the little like, hey, good job. Way to be there. A little video montage thing. If you want to send in a little video of like, hey, way to be there. Way to make it to a hundred. Kevin, we'll do a little montage. The 14 people who watch these, <laughs> you, me, and your mom, 14 times collectively. Yeah. It's going to be a weird montage. It is. It's going to be repeating a lot. Um, <laughs> 100 times. I can All do right. a lot of voices, but not 100. So uh, Maybe that's what we should do. Just impersonations <laughs> of like random people. Do you have a Mark Rosewater impression? I'm putting you on the spot. No, I don't. That's good. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's good. That'll I be a you thing. I don't, I probably All right, crack it back time. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, crack it back time. Sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. My spectacles. Sorry. Seeing my spectacles. Sorry. Uh, their link is in the description below. <laughs> Definitely check them out. They are helping yeah. us out a lot with this. They um, just got a bunch of new stock. So if you're yeah, in did, the area, actually. go check them out. Um, not just magic cards. They got comics, pops. They got your pops. My hands all sweaty and I can't open the back. <laughs> there we go. 
I did not have that problem. What's your goal card, buddy? Dude, it is Steel Leaf Champion. And mine is Squee. Oh. Who doesn't love a good Squee in the morning? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Helping no, or hurting? <laughs> no comment. That was amazing. Oh, um, oh that's actually pretty good. Uh, Sorry, wait, I didn't get, I get it. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably mine. Uh, I got Grun, the Lonely King. This <laughs> card's amazing. Yeah. Um, oh. Ooh. Yeah, Grun is definitely my pick. My rare, by the way, was uh, Mishra's Self Replicator, which eh. I do not like in Limited. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, my rare was Grand Warlord Rad Radha. Not bad. Radha. Uh, hey, it's so never one more creatures you control attack. Add that much mana in any combination of red and or green. Any combination. So you're a man of pool. Beta. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you like attacking? I'm like getting some extra mana. <laughs> Look, That's <no>. awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, headphone users. <laughs> Put a spoiler like a few minutes before. Um, it's but coming up. I'll do a 3, 2, 1. Like my, my other... Um, <laughs> My other pick <laughs> potentially would be Arvad the Cursed. I like Arvad. He does work and he kind of encourages the legendary theme. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, I think for limited, he works a lot better. Um, yeah. Rada is no. actually, I mean, it's not, she's not a bad card by any God, means. No, 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 she's no, no. great. Definitely uh, not. But I might take Arvad <sighs> over, over her. I'm going in that way. I really like Arvad. Yeah. Death Touch and Life Link together is just kind of insane. It's pretty good. And it buffs all legendary creatures. Right. So, like, that yeah. puts you in a... You don't necessarily have to go for that, but, like, if you pick up one or two extras, right, it's, that's, like, cool. Boost yeah, them up a little that's bit. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, man. I think I got that's you. I mean, the, like, the Hail Mary play. Oh, Embolus' Clutches. <laughs> that card's amazing. Uh, This is the bomb that yeah. grabs other bombs. <laughs> I always kind of, like... Because there's always one. Yeah, of course. And I always see that card, and I'm like, do I have the stones to play that card? Do it. That's worthy of a first pick. You think? Yeah. Maybe not in that pack specifically, yeah. but like, I would definitely first pick it. Because there's one in uh, in Hour of Devastation yeah. that, like, I mean, you take. Yeah, it's you steal great. Things. It's really good. <sighs> It turns the opponent's bomb against them. So it's like it's like you have a catch all bomb because you will exactly. just have their bomb. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to play your thing. Yeah. And now it's my thing. Thanks. Play your thing. <laughs> play your thing. <laughs> and then it can be my thing. Then I'm gonna take We it. can all have things. <laughs> Except for legs <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of It Resolves. Make sure to answer the question of the week and check out our sponsors down below. We are going to get out of here, though. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. This has been It Resolves. Do you this think, has been It Resolves. Do you think we just, like, <sighs> outed ourselves as Family Guy fans? Yeah. No, I mean, we, we definitely did. did. Does that... That's fine. Does that scare anyone away? It's been almost 100 episodes. You gotta, like... You gotta just let it all Know out. some of the bad sides now. Yeah, yeah. At least we didn't say giggity or anything. That would have just been. Don't do it. Don't. I see that look in your eye. Did you do it, you bearded little. <sighs> giggity. God. <laughs> uh, we're going to cut it here? Yeah, probably. All right. Bye, guys.